Hello and welcome to week three. This week we're going to be focusing on observation and assessment in the classroom. The agenda for this week is going to be a Kahoot activity as a review of week two. We're going to look at the uses of informal assessments. We're going to look at what documentation looks like for infants and toddlers. Then I'm going to guide you through activity one, which is going to be on documentation web for infants and toddlers, and this is going to be done on Blackboard on the discussion forum. Then we're going to look at what is observation and the different types of observations that we're going to be covering this semester. Then we're going to look at activity two, anecdotal records. This is another activity that you're going to be completing on Blackboard on the discussion forum. And then we're going to review the homework for this week. Okay, so the Kahoot activity is going to be online. This is the link for it. You can click on this link and it'll take you to a screen similar to this one with the purple backdrop here. So click on the classic view and it'll give you the game pin. With the game pin, you will be able to access the Kahoot activity. It's going to be on assessment and observation and early childhood education, and it's going to ask you questions uh, about this topic and give you uh, the correct answers afterwards. You're going to need to access it either through downloading the Kahoot app onto your phone or going into a browser and logging into kahoot.com and putting in um, this address and the pin that shows up for it. Okay, so uses of informal assessments. So last week you should have watched a video that explains what the differences are between informal and formal assessments. In essence, informal assessments are those that are designed and implemented by the classroom teacher. So these are the kinds of assessments that you are going to do as a teacher in the classroom. And they are used for different purposes. So we're going to see that sometimes they're used for placement and grouping. And for placement, a good example of an assessment designed by teachers used for placement is an admissions test or a test that is done at the beginning of the school year to um, provide a baseline for the teacher to see where children are in order to then group them by levels of performance. So um, these kinds of assessments are going to allow teachers to group children together that are performing at a similar level in respect to a curriculum area or a content area. For diagnostic evaluations, assessments, informal assessments are also used typically by special ed teachers that are going to observe children and are going to determine if a child has a particular learning delay or a particular learning disability and if a child might need to be then referred to a specialist. So for diagnostic purposes, informal assessments are also used. The main reason why teachers use informal assessments are for instructional planning. So you're going to see that every lesson plan that you write, at the end of the lesson plan, there's a section on assessment. So the lesson plan typically has one learning objective that is the goal for the children to meet or to reach during that lesson. And then you're going to have instructional and pedagogical strategies that you're going to use to facilitate that learning for the children and to help them attain that learning objective. And then in the assessment portion of the lesson plan, you're going to design an informal assessment tool or strategy to help you gauge how far the children went in achieving that learning objective. So are, did they completely achieve it? Are they on their way uh, to achieve it? Or have they no clue what this learning objective was about and have not met it at all? So the assessment portion of your lesson plan is really going to help you gauge if that learning objective was met and to what degree, but it's also going to inform future planning. So the following lesson plans that you're going to develop are going to stem from the knowledge that you gain through that informal assessment 
in that particular lesson that you taught. So that's going to give you insights as to what to teach next. So that's why it's used mainly um, and, and in a very systematic and continuous way for instructional planning. It's also used for formative and summative purposes. And again, in that video that you saw last week, it, it outlines what the difference between formative and summative, um, what, what those differences are. But it, for teachers, you can use formative assessments uh, and observation as a tool to inform formative assessment to gauge how the learning is going. So in a particular lesson, you might be able to observe that some children are not quite getting what you're trying to explain, and then you decide on the spot to include some examples. Or you, or you decide to ask the children some questions that are gonna help them think through that particular concept that you're trying to explain. So the formative assessment is something that is going to tell you how the process is going during the process, during the, the learning and teaching process. The summative kinds of assessments are gonna give you an overall summary of what the learning experience was like for each student or for a group of students. So it's gonna happen afterwards. It's not gonna happen during the process, but after the, the process. And it can happen after a lesson, it can happen after a unit, it can happen after a quarter or a semester or a year. It depends, and, and it, it depends on what the plan is for that particular informal assessment, but it also, could, you could have many different types of summative assessments throughout the course of the year. As well, you can have many different types of and techniques for formative assessment throughout a learning process. So documentation for infants and toddlers, and we're focusing on infants and toddlers because assessment and observation for infants and toddlers is going to look a little bit differently than it does for older children. So for infants and toddlers, we can use different strategies to document or to take note of what is happening in terms of development and learning for these young children. So we can use photos and videos where we are documenting through these photos and videos the different events in the lives of the infants and the toddlers. So when they learn to climb, when they um, participated in a group activity, when they interacted with a particular object or toy, etc. Right. So these photos are going to give us a picture, literally an image of, of the development of the child. And if we accumulate these photos over time, these photos are going to tell us the story of the development or the learning progression for the infant and toddler that we're documenting. Daily diaries and records have to do with the schedule. Um, the eating patterns, the daily life in the classroom that we record in order to establish patterns of behavior in the child and in order to perhaps go back and determine why certain behaviors are occurring in the child. So if we have a documentation, a daily documentation, a daily record of um, these eating patterns and sleeping patterns and child interactions, and play incidents of the child in the different moments on our daily schedule, we are going to be able to determine why certain behaviors occur. Stories about children are anecdotes. So stories about children for infants and toddlers is very similar to our anecdotal records that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. So they're anecdotes that occur during the day or events that occur, incidents that occur during the day that are significant and there are significant to document. So we write a little note, we write a little description of what that event entailed and we keep those notes over time. Developmental checklists are really helpful in order to see how children are meeting the different developmental milestones as they learn and grow. And these developmental checklists are not necessarily designed or developed by the teacher, but they're available. They're develop developed by developmental psychologists and they're available for the teachers to use. And you can easily check off milestones that the child has uh, achieved 
or progress towards a milestone that the child is making evident in their behavior. And then we have reports. Reports are narrated uh, papers that are written periodically and that are shared with the parents. So reports can be written um, monthly, they could be written quarterly, they could be written each semester or at the end of each year. And this will report back to the parent how the child is doing in each of the four areas or main four areas of uh, child development. So let's look at the documentation web now. When we assess children, there are uh, different types of documentation that we can use. And we talked a little bit about those before with photos and anecdotes and uh, records and so on. Um, so we'll have that there are different types of these of these classifications of documentations that we can use. So narratives is one of the types, and in the narratives we have um, the journals that the teachers write, the professional community notes, the narratives for children, um, the narratives for the display, the narratives for the parents. So all of these records that are, or reports that are written uh, in a narrative fashion. There are other types of documentation that have to do with observations and progress of performance. So the anecdotal records or notes, the indicators of disposition, the developmental checklist, all fall under this category of observation of progress and performance. Then we have results of work and play activities. And here is where we can use those videos and, and photographs of the children's constructions, of their performance, of their creative work, of their language if we audio record them speaking. Um, then we have child self-reflections, our records of conversations or lists or webs or graphs or flow ch charts that are going to help us see uh, how the child relates to others and how the child interacts with others. And these could be done by ourselves um, in talking to the child and, and um, jotting these out for the child. But sometimes um, it, when the child is um, literate in the sense that they can write or they can draw, uh, this might be able to uh, be completed by the child as well. But it's about getting the child to self-reflect on their learning and us, the adult, to record that self-reflection. And then lastly, we have the individual portfolios in which we collect all the work samples that uh, the child has produced or the ones that make evident the development milestone or the development stage in which the child is at. We collect those work samples. We collect uh, learning center samples. We collect photos and videos. We collect audio recordings and we compile them all together in a portfolio that helps us tell the story of who the child is at that point in time. We can use portfolios as both formative and summative kinds of informal assessments. And um, there, it's the case study that we're gonna do in this class is going to be this sort of portfolio uh, type of assessment. It's a all-encompassing comprehensive kind of assessment. So for activity one, and this you're gonna complete on Blackboard in the discussion board, in pairs, so you're going to have another classmate to work with, you're going to discuss one of these branches of the documentation web. And I'm going to assign uh, a branch to each group. And you're going to discuss your branch and you're going to tell us how it can be used to assess infants and toddlers. So how would you use this? What kinds of uh, informal assessments would you develop and you would use to assess the progress, the development, the learning of infants and toddlers. So then you're going to have one of your group members share in um, what your assigned documentation type entails and both of you in your group should post at least one comment on uh, one of the groups of the other groups that have uh, posted as well on the discussion board. So remember this, this documentation web, you're gonna, your group is gonna be assigned one of these five uh, types of documentation and you're gonna tell us 
how do you think it could be used in order to assess infants and toddlers? Isn't this little girl the cutest? Okay, uh, let's move on to observation. So observation is a method of gathering information about children. And remember, we're, we're looking at observation, the definition within early childhood education. So it's a method for gathering information about children through watching them, through looking at them intentively. And it's a systematic method. So it's not just about writing any notes um, that come into your mind at a certain point in time while you're watching children, but it's about systematically gathering information about children or a particular child, in the case of your focal child, about that child over time in order to be able to learn about that child and know how that child learns, develops, and grows over time. So there's three characteristics that all observation needs to have. It needs to be descriptive, so it needs to tell us the story of what you are watching, what you are observing. It needs to be objective, so all interpretations, inferences, analysis, Subjectivities need to be left aside. It needs to be very objective, just the facts, just what you observe, just what happened. And then it needs to be very detailed. So everything that you observe needs to be in that narrated description of the observation. So if the child uh, spoke to another person and made an utterance, you need to, in quotation marks, cite exactly what the child said. Even if they made mistakes, even if they mispronounced words, you want to have all of that because all of those details are going to give you information in terms of the child's development. So DOD, you need to remember for every observation to be descriptive, to be objective, and to be detailed. So always remember. That each observation needs to be DOD. Okay, so types of observations and assessments. So this semester we're going to cover these types of observations and assessments. We're going to look at anecdotal records, we're going to look at running records, we're going to look at uh, time sampling and event sampling, we're going to look at checklists, rating scales, and rubrics. And some of these are more assessment tools and some of these are more observation tools. But all of the observation tools can be used for assessment purposes. And all of the assessments can be used then to inform us about the child's uh, developmental progress and about the child's uh, needs, educational needs. So it's gonna inform our planning to help the child continue to make progress in their um, education. Okay, so anecdotal records. Specifically, this is the first technique that we're going to look at. And not this week, week three, but in week four, you're going to submit your first observation technique exercise, and it's going to be using an anecdotal, anecdotal record uh, template. So an anecdotal record is going to be a written description of the child's behavior. So remember, it's going to be descriptive, it's going to be objective, and it's going to be detailed, right? So it's an objective account of all the incidents, everything that happened in a particular moment in time for this child. So you're going to talk about what happened, when it happened, and where it happened. And this record then can be used to understand aspects of behavior, to understand the child's development, to understand... Um, where the child is going and, and how they're progressing and their growth and learning. So this is an example, and here in the next slide it's a little bigger, an example of an, an anecdotal record. So first you're going to have the information of the child, you're going to have the child's name and age. It's going to be very important for us to also include the months if you have the ages in the months because we're going to see that a 4.0 child is going to behave quite differently than a 4.11 child in terms of years and months, right? So you want to have those months um, there as well in the age. You're going to have the location, you're going to have the observer, and the observer is yourself, you're the one who's making this observation, the type of development observed, and you're going to see that in anecdotal records, we want to focus on one development area because it's an anecdote. Uh, it's just one event that you're observing 
and you want to really focus and say, okay, I'm going to observe today cognitive development. And you're going to go in with the focus of cognitive development and look for an event that you are going to, or an incident that you're going to highlight in your anecdotal record that is particular or pertinent to that particular development area that you selected. So a running record versus an anecdotal record would be different. A running record is you have established that from 10, 10 to 1025, you're going to sit in a corner of the room and you're going to observe what's happening and you're going to record everything. That would be a running record. You're recording everything that occurs. An anecdotal record is going to focus on one incident that occurred that is going to highlight some aspect of the particular area of development for this particular child. And you're going to see that here, in this example, and this example is coming from your, your textbook, in this example, the incident is the description portion for us in our template, in which you are, you're doing the DOD, right? You're describing, you're being objective, and you're being very detailed in how you're telling what you've seen. And then in the notes or comments section, in this example, is going to be the same as our analysis where we're making inferences and analyses or our column where we're making connections to theory right and here in this second section of the of this example over here in this area is where you can make connections interpretations analyses where you can sort of debrief what does that mean what did that incident that you just observed and described means for you so for us, you're going to see that our template, what we're going to use for anecdotal records, is a little bit different from the example that we saw before because we have three columns. So in the description section of the column, you're going to be objective, detailed, and um, descriptive, right? So you're going, to, you're going to do the DOD in that first column that's called description. In the second column that's called analysis, you're going to start making interpretations, inferences. Okay, what, what does this mean? Does this mean that the child might have possibly be having a bad day? Might this be that the child doesn't really understand the concept that is being uh, facilitated here? What does it mean? And then in the connections section is where we're going to make links with developmental theory based on the reading. So the more you read, the more background knowledge you're going to have, theoretical and conceptual background knowledge to interpret what that description and what the analysis means in terms of theory. So you're going to be able to say, okay, well, that all this means that the child is at this stage of cognitive development, or that the child has acquired the concept of number, or that the child has object permanency, or that the child is able to empathize with others in terms of social emotional development. So depending on which area of development you are focusing on, for this for your particular anecdotal record the connections are going to be with that particular area of development so we talked about these three columns but before you get into that you have to tell us a little bit about this child right so tell us the name of the child the age remember to include months if you can if you know this the location which would be maybe the school or the classroom if you are in a outside in the park or in the playground, that would be the location. The observer is you. You, you are the observer. That, that Your name would go there. The area of development observed is one of the areas of development that you're concentrating on that this anecdotal record relates to. So, And it can be that in one anecdote, you can see some aspects of language and some aspects of cognitive development, but focus it. This, remember, you, you need to really hone in and focus the anecdotal records on one area of development to make it rich and to make it really um, highlight that particular aspect of that area of development. Then you have the date, the time, and if it was the anecdotal record was taken between, say, 11.05 and 11.10, then you put that range of time and then the class schedule period is if this happened during snack time did it happen during circle time did it happen um, during uh, free play time or uh, recess or sort of what was the period of the day in which this occurred 
So this is our template and we're going to use this for anecdotal records. We're going to use a very similar template for all of the observations that you're going to take on your um, local child to include into your case study. So for activity number two, you're going to watch a video and you're going to find this video either by copying this link and posting it onto uh, your browser or it's also on Blackboard in the course content under course material section under week three and it's called video activity two focused observation. So and you're going to see that when you watch this video it's about three and a half to four minutes long. When you watch this video you're going to focus on one child and try to focus on one area of development and then write your your DOD your description objective and detailed observation on that particular child on that particular area of development that you decided so maybe watch the video and then go back again and watch it to do the activity so the activity itself is going to consist of using the anecdotal record template choose a child in the video and complete the template on that particular child and do as much as the template as you can you will be able to complete the description portion you will be able to complete the analysis portion with your inferences and your subjective sort of observations of what happened and you might not have a lot to complete in the connections portion yet because we haven't done a lot of reading but you can start making some inferences there might be some things that you read already that you can connect to what you're observing if not if there's not a lot there then it's okay you can leave that blank for now but at least the first two columns uh, do your best to fill those out then you're going to swap your observations with your assigned partner so send it email it to your partner and say okay here's my observation and your partner is going to read through your observation and it's going to highlight especially from the description portion what aspects are descriptive are objective and are detailed so you're you're going to be looking for your partner's dod and your partner is going to be looking for your dod and your description and then they're going to provide feedback and you're going to provide feedback to them on their observation of skills so what are they doing well and where can they improve it might be that in the description you found that the person your partner was making inferences or was very subjective or there was not enough detail so you couldn't envision what was going on okay so those are some of the things that you could potentially highlight for uh, your partner in terms of what they're doing well and where they can improve and then for the discussion board what you're going to post is individually each of you is going to share what you learned through this activity and share with others and then comment on at least one of your classmates posts so this is activity two so the first one has to do with the documentation web and you're going to do that in small groups or with a partner and this one you're also going to work with a partner but what you're going to ultimately post on blackboard is going to be an individual post on your reflection on how this activity worked for you okay so wrapping it up for this week week three it's online it's asynchronous it opens on monday and closes on saturday as all as our weekly modules do and for this week you need to read warthman and hardin chapters six and seven if you're using the eighth edition or chapters five and six if you're using the seventh edition you read couple and breda camp that's the dap book the developmentally appropriate practice book you're going to read pages one through page 31 that is going to explain what the NACI position statement is. And then you're going to complete these two activities on Blackboard in the discussion forum. Again, one is with your partner and then one of you is going to post and then the other one is with your partner as well, but both of you are going to post on how this activity worked out for you. That is all. I hope you enjoy the activities for this week.